This is the Factor Slick time trial bike of AG2R's Roman Bardet. Factor bikes have been around for some time now and they were born in Norfolk in the UK. Uh, they came from a group of people who were working with BF1 Systems, an engineering company who'd worked with the likes of Ferrari, Aston Martin, Maserati, etc. And also with a whole host of Formula One teams and other motorsports too. Uh, they made their Factor bike. Last year was the first time we saw it on the pro scene with One Pro Cycling, but this year is their first foray into the World Tour with AG2R. Now we've seen a couple of their bikes on GCN before on the road side of things but I think this is the first time we've seen their new slick time trial bike which was released uh, back in March of this year and uh, they put a lot of time and effort into making this lighter and more aerodynamic and of course Roman Bardet used this en route to third overall at the Tour de France this year. One of the things which has been quite unique to Factor ever since their early frame sets is this split down tube, which is now called the Twin Bane Evo. Now they claim it does reduce drag quite significantly. In fact, 100 grams of drag less at 40 kilometers per hour. And even more than that, if you go at race speed, apparently, uh, that is, of course, if your race speed is above 40 kilometers per hour, which mine probably isn't any longer. And what it does mean is that if you want to mount a bottle cage on the down tube here, you can see Roman Bardet only has one on the seat tube at the moment, uh, you have to get a special mount which crosses over on these two bolts just here. Another difference between this bike and its predecessor is the much wider seat stays and also forks there. Uh, this is mainly for aerodynamic reasons, but of course it means you can fit wider tyres uh, with plenty of clearance there as well. Uh, they say you can fit up to 28mm tyres, I think that's mainly down to the fact that the chain stays are still reasonably close to the wheel, because uh, looking here at the seat stays and the fork as well, you could probably almost fit cyclocross tyres in there if you so wished. Now one thing I know that Factor are particularly proud about is the cockpit there at the front, which they designed rigorously uh, with a company called 51 Speed Shop, an American company who specialise in bike fitting and also performance analysis. Now they are extremely adjustable, those bars at the front, from their height to the reach to the angle to the width of the elbow pads, etc., which makes it much easier for the mechanics to get their riders into the right position if they've been into the wind tunnel, for example. And something else that you don't see really on most other time trial bikes is what I'm going to call a mono stack. Uh, that stack between the tri bars and the flat bars which come underneath. And most of the time these days, if, if riders have got a stack, there are two stacks underneath one for each of the bar extensions. But here, there is just the one. And right behind it is the junction box for Shimano's DI2. Let's take a look at the rest of the bike then. Uh, AG2R are sponsored by French wheel manufacturer Mavic, and he is running the Comet Pro Carbone SI front wheel, and here at the back, he's got the carbon disc wheel. Don't be disconcerted by this big hole here with the valve inside. Uh, once they've got the tire up to pressure on race day, they will cover that with some tape, so it is much more aerodynamic. Uh, the Dura Ace group set is pretty much throughout, although they do have this hanger here at the back, the cage, which is supplied by Ceramic Speed. And I have to say, it does really stand out with the size of that lower jockey wheel, particularly as not too many of the pro teams are running them just yet. The cranks are supplied by SRM. This is their latest model, which they worked on with THM, the specialist lightweight uh, company. Fully carbon cranks, and I understand they're only 99 grams per crank, which really is quite unbelievable. Uh, the Durace chain rings are currently 56 teeth and 44 on the inside. And here at the back, a fairly narrow range cassette, 11 only up to 25, which is very narrow for an 11 speed cassette. Behind the cranks, uh, there's something which I've never spotted before. It's a K-edge mount, which prevents, of course, the chain from coming off the small chain ring, uh, but also extends a little bit further down. It's a special SRM version, which has the magnet at the end, which trips the SRM uh, into power, basically, when you start turning the cranks. Uh, very neat, uh, much better, I guess, than sticking the magnet onto the frame itself. Also, something which I haven't mentioned so far about the frame, uh, the front derailleur mount here is removable. So if you want to run a one-by system with a single front chain ring and you want to be more aerodynamic, you can take all of that off. Up on the top, Roman Bardet has decided to go for a Physique RS TT specific saddle, which has got the integrated uh, grip as opposed to some of the sandpaper, which you see on other riders' normal saddles. Uh, the tyres are supplied by Continental, and he is using the Podium TT tubulars uh, in 25 millimetre version. 
Now I've just been doing some measurements of the bike and it seems as though his saddle height is roughly 77 centimetres from the centre of the bottom bracket up to roughly where he'll be perched on the saddle. Uh, it's about six centimetres from the tip of the saddle behind the bottom bracket, so a reasonable way back for a TT bike. Most riders tend to be on that five centimetre point. And then between the tip of the saddle and the end of the extensions here is 86 centimetres, almost bang on. So he's around about 80 centimetres, which is the limit uh, from the tip of the extension to the centre of the bottom bracket, measured horizontally. Before I started the video, I did have a quick word with Baden Cook, who's now working with Factor Bikes, and he claims that this bike is a kilo and a half lighter than its predecessor, which is quite remarkable. Uh, unfortunately, I can't check what the actual weight is because I've left the scales at the GCN office. I do apologise for that. Please don't be too harsh in the comment section down below. Uh, if you've got any thoughts on this bike, you can though leave them in that comment section. And if you haven't yet subscribed to GCN, you can do so now by clicking on the globe. Meanwhile, if you like your time trial bikes, at the Vuelta we did a TT tech piece and you can find that by clicking just up there. Or on the other hand, if you haven't yet seen the latest GCN show, you'll find that in the other corner down there.